Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather. We've got some residual snow falling right now in Colorado, and then two additional storm systems lined up for the West Coast. Now, the first one, like I talked about the last couple of days, will spread some decent moisture to the West Coast, but then it kind of washes out as it hits the interior uh, west. Storm number two is the one to watch. It's a powerful storm. It's got good jet support. It's got colder air, and it's going to bring a now weak to possibly moderate atmospheric river set up for the Sierra of California and that's why the totals look so good out there and in fact it'll hold a lot of its strength as it moves into the interior with some very heavy snow through parts of uh, parts of Idaho parts of Wyoming Utah and also Colorado so all of that I am watching at this point let me first show you what the infrared satellite uh, looks like here so notice the storms lined up over the Pacific there's the residual low going through Colorado. The next storm hitting the uh, hitting BC in the uh, Pacific Northwest, and then the one behind it in the North Pacific heading for the Bering Strait, the Bering Sea. That's the one to watch. That's storm number two, uh, which promises to be bigger. So I wrote about it, uh, published just a little bit ago on my uh, blog, ChrisTomer.com, and talked about the large storm system for 1210 through 1213. So that's the timing of that storm system. Um, mentioned a few things. Baker got uh, 10 inches. You've got more coming. Uh, Wolf Creek got another six. Put them at a puts them at a 17 inch storm total. Purgatory's at a 15 inch storm total. And Alta picked up another four. A little appetizing type of snow, but that's a 154 season total at this point. Went through uh, the setup and went into the forecast pattern. So let me just show you this full. So this is uh, the jet stream pattern for 12.9. This is tomorrow. Um, so low number one moving into the interior and washing out. The main storm behind it, you can see it being curled and coddled by the jet stream coming in, um, getting ready to take aim at California. So that is 12.9. Here is 12.13, the end of, of that big storm system as it's rolling away from Wyoming and Colorado, um, putting some backwash through Wyoming and Colorado. Um, and then there's another low. You can kind of see it. It's more of a meandering low. It's, it's that low that's sort of cut off from the main flow um, out in the, uh, the Central Pacific. That one, and if I take you all the way out to 1217, um, kind of drops south. It goes really far south, and it truly is meandering. Most of the west is dry at this point. After that big storm on 1213 exits Wyoming, Colorado, 1214, 1215, 1216, 1217 are pretty much dry across most of the, uh, the Intermountain West. Um, so I looked at all that on the, uh, the blog post. I also went into timing as well. So um, let's take a look at that. I'll take it full. Here is the, f the forecast radar in the satellite. So this is Friday at 6. There is Saturday at 6, storm washes out, here comes the big boy, hits California, Sunday at 6, starts to move into the interior, spins its way through with heavy snow, and there's Tuesday at 6, there's Tuesday 12:13 at 11 p.m., um, so at that point the low is moving out of Wyoming, Colorado, and moving away, and what you see is uh, on the back side, the backwash there through Wyoming, Montana, and Colorado one more time, there's Friday at 6. There is Saturday at 6, and here comes Sunday at 6 a.m. By the time we get into uh, Monday at 6, here comes the big low into the interior, and there is a Tuesday at 6, and then Tuesday night. So that is the evolution. Um, and then I went into forecast totals, and I did it in three parts, um, so you can get an idea how this is all going to fall in time. So period 1 is big through 1210, because on the front end of this, this is when... You know, 12, 12, 9, 12, 10, 12, 11 is when this really hits the Sierra squarely. And you can see the numbers are big through Shasta and about two feet in Heavenly, a little over two feet down at Mammoth. Numbers are still big at Baker. So you've got uh, this, again, capturing both that washout storm and the, and the big one behind it. And then you're starting to see some snow in the interior. Look at Schweitzer. Look at Red Mountain down to Sun Valley and Brundage looking pretty good. I like what I'm seeing right there. So that's 12.8 through 12.10. Now here is the prime period for the Intermountain West. As the storm comes out of California, it still drops another 6 to 9 in the Sierra. So you're looking at over 2 feet for all of the Sierra, over 2 feet, close to 3 feet for a lot of places. Now in the interior, I like 15 to 20 for the Wasatch. 
even Brian Head gets in on this with about a foot. Um, up in the Tetons, I like uh, a little over a foot, so 14, 15 there at uh, Jackson and Grand Targhee. I have to watch the, I have to watch those numbers closely. Really will be dependent on the track. The further south it goes, the less snow you get. The further north, the more you get. So. Um, those are teetering, but we'll, I'll watch those. In Colorado, it looks like kind of a 5 to 12 inch snow with this through 12, 13. And I up the numbers just a touch down in northern New Mexico. Again, that runs through 12, 13. Here is 12, 14 through 12, 17. So beyond the scope of that big storm, there's some wraparound early on 12, 14. Um, and then that's it. Most of the west is dry through 12, 17. Um, I showed you that meandering low. That, that'd be way down the road if it has an impact. I mean, it looks like it's drifting so far to the south that I'm just not sure at this point. But so there's 1214 through 1217. Once again, um, here's the first period, 128 through 1210. Um, the big snow hits California. 1211 through 1213, it goes into the interior. And then in the final period, 1214 through 1217, it uh, transitions away. So there you go, guys. Thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care.